Jillian, good morning. Thank you for good being morning. here. And it is a pivotal moment, as Chad said, in our country's history as we see what is about to unfold in the coming days and weeks. What is the president saying this morning about the impeachment process? The president is still talking about the monumental trade deal with China yesterday, the Dow Jones uh, getting past 29,000 and making history in that way. Yesterday indeed was historic, but for a different reason than Pelosi's fist bumps and high fives and commemorative pens. They acted like a bunch of Southpaws getting Major League Baseball contracts. It was embarrassing, and it was anything but solemn and bipartisan. I, I think that she really screwed up this process from the beginning, never brought along public support, never had enough evidence to include in those thin, specious articles of impeachment. Sandra, stuff like bribery, extortion, the Mueller report, the quid pro quos, all the things that they promised, many of the things that their, some of their witnesses under oath uh, set in, insisted would be included are simply not there. And this president is just barreling forward as president, as commander in chief, taking out the world's worst and most dangerous terrorists, getting, keeping this economy humming, getting these trade deals with China. Today, the USMCA will be voted on in the Senate one hour before the articles of impeachment. Talk about people who are doing the people's business and then the members who are ignoring the people. And I think so desperate, so desperate to get this president that the left is now, the Democrats and their friends and their, their allies in the media are propping up an, an indicted uh, criminal, this Parnas character, and, and maybe even nominating a socialist for president. If you want to get the president, get him at the ballot box. They have no idea how to do okay. that. So they waste their time and our money with all these Let's go through a few things quickly. A uh, White House official was quoted in the Hill saying that lasts no more than two weeks. Is that a general consensus of the White House, two weeks? It seems about right for the following reason, Bill. We're not talking about short or long, uh, protracted or brief, so much as full and fair. And full and fair with such thin evidence, uh, such uh, weak articles, these two articles are very weak. I mean, obstruction of Congress uh, coming out of the process in the House that we don't we don't see the need to have a protracted lengthy trial this will be much more familiar the, to the american the people the president will have four attorneys present in the senate yes, maybe he will. more uh pat he Cibalone, right. be one of them jay seculo be another give us a set peel back the curtain what is their defense strategy in the senate well a great defense is a great offense meaning that they will be able to do things they couldn't do in the house uh present evidence or maybe witnesses but also challenge others put their comments into the record under oath as to uh, what happened and what didn't happen here. And I, I think that this will be a much more familiar process to most Americans who couldn't really follow along with whatever the House was doing it, essentially making it up as they went along, getting law professors literally to lecture the rest of us, uh, as opposed to an actual trial with which most Americans are very familiar. Either they have first-person knowledge of the trial system or they've seen it in the TV or movies. They know that in a real trial, the judge, if you will, who's sitting up there as the chairman of the committee, can't do what Nadler and Schiff did, which is go off denigrating and insulting the president of the United States, the defendant, with nobody but able still, to object. Kellyanne, but still Democrats are making the case, of course, for witnesses. A lot of talk about John Bolton. Republicans are making the case, some for and against having witnesses. Where does the White House stand on that, and what is that battle going to look like? Well, the White House respects the Senate's role here constitutionally, and they will vote on whether or not to have witnesses. So we will let them do that. But I think what the Democrats are trying to do here is backdoor their failures in the House to actually rush through. Then they sat on the articles for a month. It made absolutely no sense. They rushed through, and they and I think that uh, Senator Collins said it best yesterday, which is it sounds like they didn't do a thorough process. You can look at her actual statement that they should, have, they should have gone and gotten things done there that they failed to do. And so why are they trying to backdoor in the Senate what the House failed to do? That shouldn't be allowed. You mentioned Lev Parnas. Here is a quick soundbite from the interview last night at MSNBC. We'll ask you specifically about this comment here. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he was aware of all my movements. Uh, he, I wouldn't do anything without the consent of Rudy Giuliani or the president. I have no intent, I have no reason to speak to any of these officials. I mean, they have no reason to speak to me. I saw the statement from uh, Stephanie Grisham out late last night. I know he also implicated Bill Barr in this, and apparently the DOJ said 100% false. What is the White House's position on his allegations that are now public? Well, remember, people who go on TV are never under oath. Uh, this is someone who hadn't come forward on his own volition. He was arrested and then indicted on some pretty serious charges. 
And when you have the vice president's chief of staff, my colleague Mark Short, this morning saying that the Democrats own witnesses in the House completely um, subvert and undercut what Parnas is saying here about the VP. You have the attorney general's a, a spokeswoman saying 100 percent false when asked by the Matt L. Show to comment. Uh, I think that speaks for itself. But there is a pattern here, Bill and Sandra. The media and the Democrats love to imbue credibility and legitimacy on whomever, whatever, and wherever is trying to take down President Donald John Trump. And that has to stop. It's Avenatti on TV for 250 some times in the space of a year, uh, speaking of indicted and disgraced. Uh, or it's Michael Cohen, it's John Dean, now it's Lev Parnas. Anybody who's out there who wants to take down President Trump when, when they're facing problems themselves or when they can't. They can't resist the glare of the spotlight, the Klieg lights. Uh, they all of a sudden have credibility and legitimacy. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but are you are you saying flat out 100 percent what he alleges is not true? Yes or no? Well, what Lev, when Lev Parnas says, speaking of the court of law, when he says the president knew all of my moves, he gave consent. Um, objection. You cannot say what somebody else knew or thought. You can't do that. And so this is a TV. That was a TV show, not a court of law. And this is somebody who, I guess, lied to the authorities about his wealth when they were setting his bail, because remember, he's been indicted. And, uh, and the president, I think you should go by what the president himself has said. And remember, this, this started out, we're going to find those 70,000 votes and switch the election to Hillary Clinton. Then, then we're going to do Russia collusion. Wait, there's going to be a recession. Then we'll have two years of a Mueller investigation. Didn't find anything there. Now it's a call with the Ukrainian president. Do you know the major networks have spent less than 1% on the president's on economy and trade, is, sorry, and most of their time in Ukraine. It. Is he lying or not, Kellyanne? Well, he's a proven liar. He's, he's been indicted. And so I've never, look, I've never heard the president mention this person to me ever a single time. And just as, just as when I was campaign manager uh, for Trump Pence 2016, nobody ever said to me, you know what, we have a plan B. There's a ripcord we can pull if it's really getting bad in the polls. We have a secret plan to beat her. It's this Russian stuff. No one ever said that to me. I didn't speak to Russians. I spoke to people not in Moscow, but in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina, and Macomb County, Michigan. Same thing here. The idea that you need to investigate the Bidens to defeat Joe Biden. Have you seen this man when he tries to put a sentence together on a debate stage or in front of voters? Nobody needs any help being Joe Biden. As with Hillary Clinton, everything you need is right there when they speak. I think it's a, but to, to just finish on that point, it's a yes or no question. Trump knew exactly what was going on, said less partisan. and we're asking, is that statement true or false? Trump knew what was going on, how? In other words, what is okay. Lev Parnas actually saying? He's saying the president knew all of my moves. I wouldn't have done it without consent of the president. Where did he get consent of the president to do that? The president knew what? The president doesn't need, again, you, you heard the call with, with President Zelensky. There was no call for an investigation of the Bidens. He said people are talking about the Bidens, and they were. All right. The New York Times, New Yorker, CNN, they were the Hill, Fox News. Everybody was talking about if Hunter Biden's tumultuous personal life and dubious business dealings in China, Ukraine, and elsewhere were fair game and would indeed help derail his, his father's presidency. Of course, Joe Biden is seen more right now as Hunter Biden's father than Barack Obama's vice president, since the latter won't even endorse right, we'll him. We'll see where all of that goes next. There's still questions there. But when it comes to the State of the Union and the progression of events that we're about to see, some of the pres some Republicans even are urging the president to delay the State of the Union that is set to happen two weeks after the beginning of this Senate trial. Senator John Cornyn among them. Does the president have any plans, this is John Cornyn, to be the president giving the State of the Union in a chamber where he's just been charged with high crimes and misdemeanors. Not my decision to make, but I can see why that might be under consideration. Is the president considering moving that or delaying that? Senator, we have February 4th circled on our calendars here at the White House for the State of the Union. That has not changed as of this morning. Uh, and delaying it just because uh, the Nancy Pelosi promised her hard left six of the seven impeachment managers who she has handpicked were for impeaching the president before the whistleblower complaint, before the revelation of the Ukraine call. Six of the seven managers she handpicked have already pregame. They think it's just an ad water and stir impeachment process. Just because they did that, send it over to the center, set, Senate where the president will be acquitted is not reason enough to delay the State of the Union. I'll leave that decision to the president, but as of right now, we have a meeting with him today about it. As of right now, the State of the Union is on for February 4th, and just as he has not allowed 
this nonsense to stop what he's doing as commander in chief and as president, a steward of our domestic economy. He's on his way to Davos soon. He's he's actually had a trade. We had the USMCA being voted on today. Did the trade deal yesterday? The economy has never been better. And today, Religious Freedom Day, it's a very big day here in the Trump White House because the president is going to take action, have an Oval Office event around 2 p.m. today. I think the press will be in there talking about protecting the right of students to pray, to express whatever their religious denomination is in school and to make sure that our agencies are not discriminated against regulatorily organizations that are religious in nature okay. the way the last administration did. He just barrels forward, State of the Union, February 4th. Kellyanne, okay. thank you for your time. Didn't mean thank to you. be abrupt there at the end, but it's, pretty, it's pretty obvious the schedule's loaded today. Thank you for sharing some time with us today. Kellyanne Conway from the North Lawn, thank you.